and welcome to episode 35 of China Tools. My name is Dennis and I am from Hoogers van Wood. And in this episode, I want to show you this uh, hang jig from FICO. And it is an original design, which is very positive. So we will find out if it is as good as it looks suggest. And some time ago, Banggood announced the first anniversary of the FICO brand. And sites like Banggood, or basically every commercial site, hop from sales event to sales event. And that's why I never pay too much attention to a certain price offers, because there is a chance that the price will be attractive again at the next sales event, which is probably two weeks further. But just to be sure, I asked them if they would tell me what these anniversary prices would be. And I must say that some products are really attractive. And therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to quickly review all the FICO products I received over the past 12 months so that if you are interested, you will at least know my opinion for what it's worth. And because there are a lot of products, let's get started. It has been six months ago since I moved into my dream workshop and it's not completely finished yet, but I'm at the stage where I have all the equipment in the right place and enough working areas and workbenches that make working in this workshop really pleasant. And I enjoyed so much and last week I was working on an outdoor kitchen from Solid Oak and the joy erupted and I completely lost control of myself. Which looks something like this. Man, I hope you recognize that feeling. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, when I had to install the doors, it was a perfect moment to try this hing jig from FICO. And as you can see, this jig looks fantastic. And it is an original design, which is very promising considering the fact they just started. But before we go to this jig, I want to address the question, do we need a hinge jig in the first place? Especially an expensive one. Lacing a hinge is not that hard to do, but doing it consistently, especially when a door needs more than three or four hinges, can be a bit more tricky. But when you have a well-equipped workshop, I do not think you necessarily need a hinge jig. But when I tried it without, I realized I already used many tools to make this as accurate as possible and with minimum risk of errors. I needed an accurate T-ruler. Be careful to place the forced bit at the exact place. A good and stable drilling machine and forced bit to get a clean hole. Something to check the depth of the hole. And after that, I can place the hinge. And I want to align and stabilize it when I drill some holes with a self-centering drill bit so I can place the hinge perfectly aligned. But perhaps not that hard to do with the right tools, it still takes a lot of steps. And with most of these steps, there are some risks of errors. So when you work more often with the hinges, I think a hinge jig is a good addition to your workshop. Whether you make it yourself or spend $70 on this jig. Because for $70, it needs to be innovative and high quality to justify the price. And the packaging is good and will secure the tool during transport. The hang jig consists of a platform, two different inlays, a forstner bit and some small tools. And the platform looks very nice and is made from aluminum. And the engravings are good to read and give the impression of a high quality product. If you look at the drill guide, it fits nicely into the platform. The drill guide is well made from aluminum and has two bearings on the inside uh, to guide the drill bit. And because of this, the forstner bit moves really smoothly and stable. And this is really well made and excellent for durability. Another thing I like about this drill guide is that it only has two arms. And because of this, there's plenty of room for chips to escape while drilling your hole. And when I compare this to the new hang jig, but we also know these uh, kind of hang jigs from Craig, they have three arms and get clocked very quickly. Although the drill guide fits nicely into the platform, it is not uh, locked into place. But in practice, it not seems to bother. Drilling uh, the hole feels very stable and smooth. 
And one of the reasons why it felt so easy to drill a hole is the quality of the 35mm Forstner bit that comes with this hinge jig. A good quality Forstner bit makes all the difference when you have to drill such a big hole. And in episode 16 I tested this hinge jig and I measured the force needed to drill a hole and it took more than 30 kg of pressure to make that hole. And with a drill press that is not a problem, but when you have to do this with your drilling machine, you need to place a lot of weight on your drilling machine, making drilling much more uh, unstable and challenging. The forcing bit that comes delivered with this jig needs about 70 kg of pressure to drill a hole in solid oak, making a world of a difference when you have to drill a hole with your drilling machine. And when I compare this with my reference fish forcing bit, they almost need the same amount of force. My fish forcing bit needs around 60 kg of pressure, but keep in mind that this 35mm fish forcing bit alone costs about $30 in euro. This hinge jig is made for 35mm hinges. And of course you can also add a 26mm forstner bit, but then you will get problems with the offset settings. All the inlay consists of three different guides for pre-drilling the hinge screw mounting holes. And you can use them for mounting holes 45, 48 and 52mm apart from each other. And I mostly use blunt or grass hinges and they use uh, screwed holes 45mm apart from each other. And I checked the distance from the holes and that was accurate. And they also were aligned perfectly with each other. But to drill them at the right place, I had to place the inlay upside down. So you must keep that in mind. And with the platform, you can easily create an offset of 3, 4, 5 and 6 millimeters by placing these pins at the number you want. And at last, you can screw a pin at the side when you want to start at 6, 8 millimeters from the edge. But because of the two needles, it is also very straightforward to align this hinge jig with a line. The design and quality of this hinge jig combined with a high quality forcing bit makes this hinge jig very easy to work with. It works perfectly and swapping the two inlays is a nice feature. When the clamp is adjusted correctly, working with this hinge jig goes really fast, easy and without any room for errors. And when my focus is on speed, I can place the hinge in about 30-40 seconds. And even then it's almost impossible to mount this hinge out of line. But when you use a little bit more love to place this hinge, working with this jig is just a joy. I see it as an excellent luxury tool. With a $69 with a hefty price tag, and I can understand people will find it too expensive. But I cannot say it is not reasonably priced. The quality is just too good for that. And I like that it is an original design that works perfectly. Because of the anniversary, the price will be $49. And with that price, I think when you are in the market for a product like this, this may be your moment. And this, this is my scoring card. Some prices are really attractive at this moment. So I want to show all the products they sent me over the past 12 months with my opinion. So let's get started. In random order, I will show these two products together. This is a small square and a mighty square. And they look nice and are perfectly packed. And that counts for all the Vico products, by the way. They are made from aluminum and are pretty lightweight. And because of that, I think they are a bit too fragile. And of course, you can draw lines with it, but I think it is at its best to set up your equipment. In this case, the fence of my joint. And I like the design as a setup square. And when you push it against my fence, it stabilizes itself. So it's perfectly straight to the thing you want to set up. And although it's nice, it has a baffled edge, I think the bevel is a little bit too big, making it harder to check if something is square because of the shadow it creates. With a sharp edge, this is uh, more clear. The regular price is around $20, which is a fair price. And when you like the brand and already have uh, some products, this can be a good moment to add this tool to your collection because I both consider them essential tools for your workshop. The only problem I have is that I think they are better alternatives for a good setup of your equipment. And that are these models I showed in episode 7. And uh, these are made of steel have nice clean edges and are very accurate. And I rated them five stars. And you should watch episode seven if you are searching for a product like this. 
especially the mileage square, is harder to find, and I prefer the design of these two over my more than $100 in cross square. And in that episode, I will tell you why. That's it. For a little under $16, it's hard to find an accurate square, especially a mile square. And if you like the looks of these, I think you will be pleased with them. And this, this is my scoring card. One of the products I really like are these real guide clamps. And I tested them in episode 30 and rewarded them five stars. And the quality of this product is excellent considering the price. And please do not understand me wrong. A Bessie clamp is still of higher quality and if you are looking for the best, maybe a better option. But in practice, I cannot notice the difference when I work with a Bessie or the FICO clamps. They have the same characteristics and they produce the same amount of force. And the average promotion price is around $35. And now during the FICO anniversary sales, they sell it for under $30, which is the lowest price I have seen so far. Next FICO product is this large square. And it's a beast of a square. It weighs heavy and the look and feel are fantastic. I checked it for squareness and it was perfect. And it comes in a metric and a imperial version. And as a product on its own, I cannot say uh, too many bad things about it. The only thing I do not like is that the color is slightly different from the other products I have from FICO. And when you become more loyal to a brand, the color should be consistent. I found the uh, uh, use of these kind of uh, squares too limited, but that is a personal thing and I should not consider it too much when I review these products. For checking things for squareness, it's a perfect tool. But for work where you have to rely on your scale, I find the parallax effect too big because of the thickness of the scale. The parallax effect is that the readings changes depending on the angle you view the scale. And this effect is minimized with a thinner ruler or a ruler with a beveled edge. But if this is a product that you are looking for, I do not see there's anything you will dislike. It's a very serious square, but also as a serious price. But during the FICO anniversary sales, I still consider it a bargain. And this, this is my scoring card. Also from episode 30 are these uh, T-rulers. And I got a pre-production model during that review, and I made some suggestions especially about the size of the numbers of the scale. And they improved the models on these points. And a few months ago, I received the final production models and they were even nicer than I had hoped for. In fact, I really love them and like the design and the colors, the weight and the diversity in available lengths. And they definitely deserve the five star ratings. And I made a nice holder and enjoy having them in my shop. They come in a metric and uh, imperial versions, and the price are about the same as during the Double Eleven Festival, which is pretty attractive. Next FICO product is this uh, Carpenter Square. And the packaging is good, and they are starting to place some marketing on the box, which I like. It is a Carpenter Square, but a bit different than I know them. What is nice is that it looks decent and more sophisticated than the usual Swiss Square. The finish is good and the first impression is good, especially considering the price. I wouldn't say I like that they look uh, too much like the wood package carpenter square. However, they are entirely different in many ways. So do not buy this as a wood package alternative because it's not. This carpenter square could not entirely satisfy me. For checking things for squareness works perfectly, but I was not too fond of most of the other choices they made with the design. I found it too lightweight and prefer a bit more body. The numbers at the holes are too small, and I think there's plenty of room to enlarge them a bit. When I want to draw a line 10 centimeters from the edge, I cannot use the outside scale, but I have to use the inside, and this feels awkward, but it also limits the capacity. With the carpenter squares I am familiar with, you can quickly draw a line on a specific angle. But with this design, it takes two steps to draw this line. So you have to keep that in mind.
although a precision square, the holes in the scales are two millimeters apart. So that gives some limitations if you want to draw a line 51 millimeters perpendicular to the edge, for example. And of course, you can work around this, but it would be nice if it is possible the easiest way. So although this carpenter square is accurate and can do everything it claims it can do, I cannot be too enthusiastic about this tool. And even the nice anniversary price cannot change that for me. And this, this is my scoring card. I tested this quick lamp and rewarded it with uh, three stars in the last episode. And it's not a product to avoid, but as I told you in my previous episode, it is an entry level clamp. And there's a difference between an entry level clamp and a high quality one. But that also counts for the price. And during my review, the price started at $25 for a set of four six inch clamps. And now during the FICO sales, it will be just under $18. That is four and a half dollars a piece, which is starting to become insane and I would certainly rate it higher if it had that price during the review. So if you are looking for these kinds of clamps watch my previous episode because when this product fits your needs I think it becomes harder to find a more price attractive alternative of this quality. This real guide clamp not only looks the same as the quick clamp I showed you before but also shares the same clamping mechanism. So what counts for the quick clamp also counts for this rail guide clamp. Although when you specifically use it as a rail guide clamp, you do not need that much force. And then I think these clamps work perfectly. Although they use the same clamping mechanism as the quick clamps with $25 for a set of two, they are much more expensive. But that does not mean you will easily get a more price attractive alternative. And this, this is my scoring card. The final uh, FICO product I want to show is this precision square. It also comes nicely packed and is available in a metric and increment version. And in general, the larger the square, the more accurate you can measure if something is square. And also the larger the square, the more expensive they become. Uh, the average price of this square is around $30. And considering the size and looks, that is reasonable. But when you hold it in your hands, it is a bit lightweight and the shoulders are too thin. And I do not find it too stable when you place it on the shoulders. The scale is made from uh, aluminum and because of the size, I think steel would be a better option. But I do not know if it's fair to expect that on a $30 square. The numbers on the scale are too small. Especially on the increment version, I find them very small. It looks a bit unsettled. The square's balance is good when it's used to draw lines perpendicular to the edge of a workpiece. And uh, the size is great for checking things for squareness. But one way or the other, it did not completely satisfy me. And I think the weight, the instability and the small numbers are responsible for that. And this, this is my scoring card. Well, that was the end of this video. I hope you liked it. The next video will be a workshop video again, so I hope to see you then. All the best, take care of yourself, and we will see each other next time.